zombie apocalypse. <laughs> Welcome back to Eco Talks. In previous session, we have discussed about the indifference curve theory, assumptions, and properties of indifference curve. In today's session, we'll discuss the graphical derivation of demand curve from indifference curve theory, and also we'll discuss about the reveal preference hypothesis. Now, uh, as the price of a commodity, for example, X falls, the budget line of the consumer shifts to the right due to increase in the purchasing power with the money income of the consumer. Now, if AB is the initial budget line due to fall in price of X, the budget line will shift right to AB dash. This is the new budget line after fall in price. This new budget line will be tangent to higher indifference curve. This is the higher indifference curve, second curve. It is tangent and the point of equilibrium is E2. At E2, quantity demand, uh, quantity consumed of X2, uh, X uh, commodity is X2, which is more than X1, and of Y is Y2, which is more than Y1. So due to fall in price, consumer, so, you know, consumer consumes more quantity of both X and Y commodity. Now, so if we allow price to fall continuously and join the point of successive, uh, points of tangency of successive indifference curve and budget line, we get the price consumption line. So price consumption line is a graph show, uh, joining the points of tangency or equilibrium of in higher indifference curve and budget line. So through this price consumption line, we can derive the demand curve for commodity X. Now, if we plot the com combination of price and quantity at each equilibrium level. Now at E1, suppose if price is P1, the quantity demanded is X1. Now, we assume that price has fallen. Let the price fall with P2. So, at new equilibrium, quantity demanded is X2. And if again price falls to P3, the quantity demanded will be X3. So, if we join these points, we get the demand curve. Likewise, we have derived the demand curve using the indifference curve approach. Now, in indifference curve approach, the law of demand is derived from Slutsky's theorem, which states that Substitution effect of price change is always negative. That is, in relation to price, if price increases, quantity demand decreases and vice versa. This is the Slutsky's theorem, which is based for law of demand. Now, a fall in price of X from P1 to P2 results in increase in the quantity demanded from X1 to X2. You can see here in the graph. If the price falls from P1 to P2, the quantity has increased from X1 to X2. This is because of total effect of price change. Now, this total effect of price change is split into two separate effects. One is substitution effect and another is income effect. So, let us first see what is substitution effect. Substitution effect is increasing the quantity purchased as the price of commodity falls after adjusting the income so as to keep the real purchasing power of the consumer the same as before. This adjustment in income is called as compensatory variation. And graphically, it is shown by parallel shift of new budget line until it becomes tangent to the initial indifference curve. You can see here this dotted line is the compensated budget line. This is parallel to the new budget line AB dash and it is tangent to the previous indifference curve. Now, compensated budget line will be tangent to the original indifference curve at point E1 dash. That will be right to the in the right to the original tangency point E1 because this is the parallel line to the new budget line, which is less steep, steeper than the original one. The movement from E1 to E1 dash shows the substitution effect of price change. This movement from E1 to E1 dash. This shows the substitution effect, substitution effect of price change. Now let us see about the income effect. This compensating variation is a device which enables the isolation of substitution effect, but does not show the new equilibrium of the consumer. This, uh, the new equilibrium is defined at the E2 point on the higher indifference curve. And this shift from E1 dash to E2 is explained by the 
income effect of price change the consumer has higher purchasing power because of the fall in price so he will spend more in income on x thus moving from x1 dash to x2 this is the income effect of price change the income effect of price change is negative for normal goods and it reinforces the negative substitution effect so total price effect will be negative in case of normal goods but if the commodity is inferior the income effect of price will be positive but the uh, as the purchasing power increases less of commodity will be brought so income effect will be positive in case of inferior for most of the inferior goods the negative substitution effect will be more than the positive income effect so total price effect also will be negative in case of inferior goods in inferior we can see that in inferior goods income effect is positive substitution effect is negative and total price effect is negative there are some special inferior goods which are called as given goods in case of given goods the law of demand does not hold goods because here there is a positive slope of the demand curve and this given goods are very rare in practice now let us see the advantages of this indifference curve approach the advantage of indifference curve approach over the cardinal theory was that first they dropped the assumption of constant utility of money second is that they provided framework for measurement of consumer surplus with the help of indifference curve theory they derived the consumer surplus then third one is they gave the better criterion on cl for classification of goods into substitutes and complement based on the shape of indifference curve the goods can be classified into substitutes and complements the limitations of this theory are first is the axiomatic assumption of existence and convexity of indifference curve the existence and the shape of the convex shape of the indifference curve it was assumed there on the theoretical proof was not given by this theory the second limitation was the theory has retained the assumption of rationality and the concept of marginal utility in definition of marginal rate of substitution so these two assum uh, one is assumption of rationality which is common in both indifference curve also and cardinal so this was retained and the marginal they did not uh, use the marginal utility of concept directly but it was included in the marginal rate of substitution so this is also limitation of indifference curve theory the third was it does not analyze the effects of advertising past behavior of consumer stocks then in the interdependence of preference of consumer which led to behavior that would be considered as irrational behavior of the consumer so these are the limitations of indifference curve approach then next hypothesis in ordinal theory was the revealed preference hypothesis this was introduced by samuelson in year 1938 the assumptions of this theory were first one is rationality that is consumer is assumed to behave rationally in that he prefers the bundle of goods that include more quantities of commodity second was the consistency the consumer behaves consistently that is if he chooses bundle a in a situation which bundle b was also available then he will not choose b in any other situation in which a is also available symbolically if a is preferred over b then never b is not b is not preferred over a then third assumption was transitivity that if at any point situation if a is preferred over b and b is preferred over c that means that a is preferred over c the fourth assumption was the revealed preference axiom the consumer by choosing the collection of goods in any one budget situation he reveals his preference for the particular collection the chosen bundle of the consumer reveals that he preferred or he preferred that particular bundle in all alternative bundles available under the given budget constraint the chosen basket of goods maximizes this the utility or satisfaction of the consumer the revealed preference for a particular collection of goods implies the maximization of utility of the consumer this is the revealed preference axiom fourth assumption of revealed preference hypothesis then there are 
critics of reveal preference hypothesis first it provides direct way to of derivation of demand curve which does not require the use of concept of utility second was that theory can prove the existence and convexity of indifference curve under weaker assumptions than the earlier theories so the proof for existence and convex uh, shape of uh, indifference curve was given by the reveal preference hypothesis then e reveal preference hypothesis has provided base for construction of index number of cost of living and their use for judging changes in consumer welfare in situation where price changes these are the uh, advantage or plus point of reveal preference theory upon the previous old theories like indifference and cardinal theory that's all for today's session in further session we'll discuss the market demand elasticity of demand and uh, further part of de uh, demand no don't forget to like share and subscribe and if you have any doubts you can ask me in the comment section or message me on my telegram group ecotox thank you mm -hmm.